Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschig. Today we're talking about uh, our little floating island. Uh, last year, a piece of, uh, I guess, just a little island uh, broke off the shoreline. It was mostly just weeds and things and floated in the lake. And then in the winter time, it um, got stuck in the lake right in the middle. And uh, we went out there and did some filming so this is our little floating island. And at one point, uh, somebody decided to set fire to it. So there's a few charred places there. But uh, we took quite a few photographs. It was kind of unique. And then this summer, when it floated away again, we were looking for it and looking for it. But unfortunately, we never did find where it landed or maybe it sank. So it was a bit of a saga there. So that's the photograph. So for our uh, project today, I want to work with staining canvas. And I have here just a canvas sheet, and this has been treated with gesso. And this is uh, an oil transfer. Uh, we've uh, done several oil transfers, so I won't be doing that today, but this is how it turned out. And it's not bad for canvas because canvas has quite a weave to it. So I just want to show you some of my little experiments. Um, the best thing to have for your canvas is uh, something that um, treats it and stops it from deteriorating. So in olden times uh, for oil paintings, they used to use rabbit skin glue. Nowadays we use gesso and uh, it's an acrylic base and even oil painters use that. So, and I have some gesso here. Um, but uh, first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about some of my little experiments. I was a mad scientist for a week and trying different things to see how things would work. And I didn't have any um, uh, clear gesso, which is what you need if you want to do staining, which I want to do today. And uh, so this is the transfer and we'll be staining that later. Um, this is also from the transfer, but this is the ghost print. And this is the transfer directly onto canvas that is mounted on board. and. Uh, on a stretcher frame and then uh, I've done some ink work on it because it didn't really turn out all that well. And then this is stained with watercolor. Uh, this is the another transfer, oil transfer. I use orange TKO and uh, it's the least of the smelly ones you can use. Um, essential oils, um, eucalyptus oil works about the best. And I, as I've said, I've shown that previously, so we won't be doing a transfer directly today. So here are my little experiments. Now, because I didn't have the clear gesso, uh, it wasn't sold locally. Um, so I tried a few things. So this one is pouring medium. Uh, those of you who do um, pouring, um, you know, with colors and things, um, there's a pouring medium that you can use to make it more fluid. And as you can see, it's very stiff. I just did a quick little drawing of uh, one of the water lilies on the lake just to show what it looks like when it's uh, stained. And that's the effect we want to get. This one is absorbent ground. Again, um, not too stiff. And it works pretty good. It's more meant for media uh, on paper. So, but it seemed to work for this as well. I guess I could use it if I needed to, if I ran out of the clear gesso. I have it now. <laughs> I had my friends come and get it for me and my hubby went to the store and got something called, um, this is clear base. So you could use this. It um, makes the, um, the, the um, canvas a little bit yellow, but uh, it will allow you to stain. So this is Beauty Tone Designer 
um, clear base and I'm sure other brands have got the same thing. This is the Golden Absorbent Ground. It's an opaque acrylic primer for water media. So it, it is pretty good for what we want to do. This is the clear gesso. This is what I'm talking about. Um, got this at Michael's, but um, you know, most art supply stores will sell it. Again, uh, the beauty tone stuff uh, is uh, way less expensive, although we got this if you get, you can get it on sale if sometimes uh, if you have a card, then uh, you know, you might get a discount or something. so. I also used uh, GAC 100. Um, this is also a multi-purpose acrylic polymer. So as I said, you need to prepare the canvas, otherwise over time canvas will break down if it has paint on it. So it's not archival then. So that's why you need a gesso or some kind of acrylic primer. So then <laughs> quite a collection here. This is the pouring medium and a small bottle. I think people who do um, paint pouring uh, get it in gallon buckets because you need a lot of it. Okay, so, and here is, uh, this is GAC 100. It makes it fairly flexible, so it's good. So here is the, the clear base. You can see that it's slightly yellow but I don't really think it matters and it's nice and flexible so staining will not be a problem. Here's a clear gesso and nice and flexible. Uh, staining will be very nice with this and uh, if you, you know, you could use the white gesso of course um, but you don't have quite the same effect for you know, when you're trying to just stain, it has that wonderful quality to it. Most canvases, you would want it stretched like this. And uh, so it's nice and tight, right? And that's another thing, if you're using one of these mediums, they're quite liquid and as you stretch it, it's... And when I did the transfer, um, I had it on, you want it on a solid surface if you can and uh, so that uh, the transfer would work nicely. And this one isn't bad. You can see a lot of the detail. And that's all I did is I had it here on the, on the light table. But I could have put it on board, like you can glue it to a board so that's nice and tight, right? So, and then, but again, we're looking for that staining effect. You can see it here, but this is watercolor. Now with watercolor, you have a problem, so uh, it will lift off. Uh, I used a staining color, uh, several staining colors actually, and uh, and then I rinsed it at the tap to see how much would come off to see if it would go right back to white, but it, it didn't, it's, it stayed pretty good. But from here I would work um, stains of uh, acrylic colors on it. And then uh, if you're you really want to do it in watercolor, then spray it with a fixative after you finish. And then after that, do your, um, you know, different uh, mediums like uh, glazing liquid or something to fix it even more. And then finally your final varnish. So, and then that will, you know, that will make it permanent. And uh, most watercolors you have to put, you know, mat and, and uh, glass, you know, a paper mat on it and then glass it. So, and that's quite expensive nowadays. So I've been just going the other way and this is one way of getting sort of that watercolor effect without paying a fortune for framing. It's all about economics sometimes. Okay, so next up we will try and stain this one piece. Now, even though this has a bit of prep to it, probably some kind of a, a gesso ground, ordinarily uh, when you're painting, you do more gesso on it to prepare the, the surface. So this is just barely, you can see how flexible it is. So this is barely being primed with, with white gesso. 
So for staining, it should be fine. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I have some mixtures here already. And uh, what we're going to do is um, just keep the colors simple, probably just uh, blue, black, and white. So in order to stain canvas, you have to make the paint a little bit more fluid. Now the way to do that is you can add a little bit of water, but only up to one third. Otherwise the paint breaks apart and then it will flake off the canvas eventually. So this is black and I've added the one third water and then I've added uh, the satin glazing liquid. This is by Golden. And that makes it, as you can see, it makes it quite runny, which is what we want. I'm going to just show you that process. So we need to mix some blue. We don't need a lot. It's pretty intense color. I'm just using the um, Amsterdam acrylic. Okay, so... Uh, that's about all the water you need. And uh, you just mix it. And it's pretty fluid. And just to make sure that I haven't put too much water in, I'm going to add some satin glazing liquid. You have to be part chemist to be a painter. <laughs> So here we go. Don't need a lot. Otherwise it's not as fluid as you want. Again, just mixing. So it's a little bit more runny than heavy cream. We could probably add a tiny bit more water, but I don't think it's necessary. Our brushes are going to be wet as well. So as usual with painting anything in acrylic, you want to wet your brush. And uh, then we'll just damp it off. You don't want it too wet. And then we'll start. Now we're thinking staining, remember? So we're just going to lightly brush, and you can see that it's so fluid. And if you think it's a little too thick, um, You can also take it off so you can take a paper towel or whatever you want to remove it. So it's an awful lot like a glaze where you're just glazing over top. And I'm just going to wipe it back. Or it might even just take the what I want is a nice little glow in the sky here. So you're just staining. And that's perfect. So it's a lot like watercolor in many ways, except of course the acrylic will dry. Now we have just a tiny bit of, so for the snow, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of paint to that. Because this is black, I don't mind just over painting the black areas.
it will be fine. Now in the photograph, the blue was quite intense in the front here because it's all in shadows. So So we're just going to darken this area by adding a little bit more paint. Again, you're just staining. Sort of scrubbing in. And um, for areas that are sun touched, you can just wipe off. It gives a little texture to the snow. Nice little trick. And we'll clean our brush. And I'm just going to. Um, these fluid acrylics, um, there's also something called high flow. These are quite liquid to begin with. As you can see, you don't really need to do. You could add a bit of medium to them, but it's not necessarily uh, something you need to do. Just see how fluid they are if you have, you know, if your brush is wet. And I have a yellow mixed up already, so I'm going to Maybe just put a little bit of a glow in the sky. A little bit more of a... And we'll wipe that away. See how nice staining is? It just adds a bit of a glow. So it's certainly something to try. It could go in the snow at this level as well in here. As well as fluid, you can use a high flow. Um, I'll just show you. I don't know if that's going to open. Yep. So it's quite a bit more fluid. The high flow uh, paints are extremely, extremely staining. So a little goes a long way. So let's just wipe a little bit more of that back. and maybe some of the, just the highlighted parts of the snow here and there. It's a very neat effect. I can do this because the acrylic is still fairly wet from having so much our liquid in it. But as soon as it dries, it'll be hard as just like regular acrylic. And I think we can add a little bit of the violet here in some of the shadow tones. So, you see how intense that is. Okay, let's put a little dip, a few dips and things in here. Just for some excitement. and makes the black not so stark. Again, wiping. Be careful you don't wipe too much. Just want to tone. Let's 
So a little bit of violet and black here now. And we're going to just shore up the background trees. Now there are some little houses in there and I might try and pick those out with some small calligraphy brushes. We're not going to worry about green or anything like that. Now one thing we lost on this one, let's go back to our photograph, is our little uh, willow tree here with all this lovely branches. So we're going to try and draw that in. Now the rushes will keep black to most of it. I'm just going to scrub it in. We just want to maintain the drama of um, the floating island. By the way, uh, Josh has been working very hard on um, floating island uh, music. It's like a symphony, actually. <laughs> it's very beautiful, and I hope you'll listen to all of it, not just the bits and pieces we're going to be putting in our video. It's really quite marvelous. up and I'm going to go to a much thinner brush and water it and we'll see if we can draw the the tree in. Now I've forgotten whether I think this is the reverse of um, because when you do a print of course this was a print so I hadn't changed it. So then in order to uh, get the image right, I had to reverse it uh, on the computer. So this is actually uh, the reverse of what it actually is, but that's okay. Yeah, we're just going to... A little bit of calligraphy here. And pick out some of these brushes and and then uh, and I think um, just to demonstrate uh, supposing I didn't make a good mark I can probably Take it out and see. I don't have to do it all over again, but that was just to demonstrate it. <laughs> okay. And I'm just um, turning my brush so it has a nice point. And then it has this very strange and all sorts of little branches. Overlapping, you can play with this all you want. And uh, 
Then there's another branch here that goes this way. And it's nice for it to cut up into the sky, so. And then there's this sort of strange moon shape. And all sorts of little interesting branches coming off. You can enhance this with pen and ink if you want, like I did in the earlier piece, but you get the idea. It's going to thicken this up a little bit more. You want it to stand out. A lot of these uh, rushes were bent and broken, and some of these, of course, were burnt. I don't know who would do that. It just seems so silly. You know, it was this really pretty little island and somebody had to go and take a match to it. You know, it just kind of, that kind of mentality just escapes me. Something beautiful in nature and yep, it takes all kinds, I guess, to make a world. <laughs> And we keep looking for this little island to see if it landed somewhere and is busy proliferating. <laughs> so far, no luck. It's not even that big a lake. We've been all over it. Anyway, get the idea. And then the final things will be um, the white touches. And then uh, this is my white. And we're just going to maybe highlight a few little areas. There's a light. You can see the light uh, goes in between the rushes here and there. Uh, the light would have been coming from the west. So we're west facing here. So it might be a little bit of a touch on the top of the, the willow, um, the roof line of the little buildings, and the snow they have in their yard, just to keep it interesting. So sometimes you don't really need a lot of color for things to happen. Just to make the uh, rushes a little less stark, we're going to go back into our orange and yellow. Let's put a little bit of the yellow down. And to take it down, you add its complement to make it a little more gray. So that way you have a nice rush color. And the violet, of course, is in our composition already, so you're not adding a foreign color. And we're just going to add touches of color here. Because it's so fluid, it will just sink in have this nice stain effect. Now let this dry overnight before you uh, add any uh, mediums on it for keeping it permanent. You should put an isolation coat on it 
and maybe even some, um, if you don't want it glossy, you could put some matte medium on it first, then your isolation coat, and then your final varnish. And varnishes come in either matte or gloss or a semi-gloss. So it's all up to you how you want to treat this. Okay. So we we'll finish off a few areas here. First of all, these rushes, adding the color. And I was looking at the blacks back here. Let's just intensify that a little bit. And then we'll be... I always say we're going to be done and we have five more minutes or more. <laughs> yeah, that's just typical of me. Anyway. <laughs> well, you see things and that's how it should be. Um, it's a good idea to take your composition to the mirror after you think you're done and then uh, also to hold it upside down and then things will stick out, you know, that you didn't notice before or leave it overnight before you put your varnishes on or even, you know, longer, maybe even a week and uh, or more. <laughs> and uh, whatever works. Keep looking at it until there's nothing left that you think you can do, then it's finished. If there's still things to do, then do them. And you can give some of these black areas some shape. Having that um, transfer underneath uh, is a big help for this kind of thing. So you're not painting from scratch. I mean, it's, it wasn't all that um, focused or, or um, clear as to what things were. So that gives you lots of room to play. At the same time, it gives you a, a sense of structure. You could clarify the little houses if you want, but I think I'll just leave them be. It's just a demonstration for now. So. The things in the sky here are just interest, uh, could be clouds, could be anything. And that's just the way the transfer happened. I mean, I could whiten them, and fluff them out, but I don't think it's necessary. So, a little bit more there. Every opportunity you have to put a little tone in there, it'll take advantage. A little bit of glow here and there is all good. And it isn't so stark. So there you have it. We've learned how to do staining on uh, canvas. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you'll come and uh, hang out here at Shoreline Studio with me uh, at a future episode. Oh, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you another time. Bye for now.